Good morning, welcome to the seventh Sunday of Easter. We have just celebrated the Feast of the Ascension and Jesus has returned to heaven. We still receive his teaching in his word and his spirit. These days are deeply important in calling the Spirit to deepen us in our faith and in living the faith that we love. The Acts of the Apostles today tell us of the choice of Matthias to take the place of Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus. There is some sense in that the number of the apostles must be kept. This does not seem to last long in the early church. Rather, the church begins to recognise that the office of an apostle can be passed on to more than one, more than one from the twelve. Nevertheless, the office of apostle is important and we hear it echoed throughout the New Testament. Peter addresses the need to replace Judas to maintain the group of twelve apostles. Essentially, they wanted to witness to Jesus' resurrection. This emphasises the important fact of leadership in the continuity of the church. The first letter of St John today tells us that we remain in him and he has been with us because he has given us his Holy Spirit. Today we must pray that this Spirit, which has come upon us even more strongly, so that we can be strengthened, as were the early followers, to give witness and testimony even to the point of seeming foolish in the eyes of people. John's Gospel today contains a wonderful prayer of Jesus. Keep them in your name, those that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. What an incredible prayer for us, that they may be one, so much one that we are just just one as the Father and the Spirit, just as the Father and the Son are one. Beyond anything that we could ever imagine, this is, yet we must pray for this great gift of unity, which so often is lacking in our world, and particularly in our church. The church is what unites us, because the church is Christ present in our world. We often see only the blemishes, the sinfulness, the scandals, the brokenness, So many saints have been able to see all of that and still recognise that the Church is Christ present in our world. That is the grace of the Holy Spirit for which we can pray. The Church is you and me. The Church is all of us united with the Pope of Rome and with the bishops in communion with him. The Church is you and me accepting the teachings that have been handed down the teachings that are still given to us today. The Church is Christ incarnated into our world today. May we have the special gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can see Christ suffering in his Church for the salvation of everyone. Rather than stand idle and gaze endlessly, we have to strive to carry out this missionary calling given to us by Christ. Go out to the whole world Proclaim the good news to all creation. As Christ evangelised and commissioned us, it is now our duty to evangelise our brethren. Are we going to fail them and Christ? Surely we cannot afford to fail them. Through our baptism, each one of us belongs to a ministry, either as an apostle, a pastor, an evangelist or a teacher. Finally, As we rejoice today that Christ has ascended into heaven and that one day he will return and take us with him, let us strive to fulfil our missionary calling. This is what will qualify us where he is. When we return home today, let us take with us the joy of this encounter with the risen Christ. Let us cultivate in our hearts the commitment to abide in God's love. Let us remain united with him and among ourselves and follow in the footsteps of these people who model sanctity for us, whom the church asks us to imitate. Together with the psalmist, let us acclaim to the Lord, God goes up with shouts of joy, the Lord goes up with trumpet blast, Alleluia, Alleluia.